Merry Christmas. Welcome to you to this service of worship for Christmas Eve. I'm here in St. John's Church in Ottawa, and I welcome both members of the parish and any visitors who might be joining us this night. It isn't at all what we had planned, uh, but I'm very pleased that we have this opportunity uh, to use the wonders of technology to be together in this way, to celebrate Christmas together. We acknowledge that our parish encompasses the traditional territory of the Algonquin Nation, and we recognize the continuing presence of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit in this region. May we dwell on this land with respect and peace. Here let heaven and earth embrace. Here may God's people find home. Grace and peace from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. There were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. Suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. We light the Christ candle to celebrate Jesus' birth. Let us pray. Eternal God, this holy night is radiant with the brilliance of your one true light. As we have known the revelation of that light on earth, bring us to see the splendor of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of great darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden, and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of the, the oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian, for the boots of the tramping warriors, and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it when just, with justice and with righteousness from the time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank be to God. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, 
so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We had a bit of a discussion at coffee hour this week about the different Christmas Gospels. We compared Luke's story of shepherds and angels and weary parents with John's story, which is, of course, much more poetic. There are so many ways to speak of the truth of what we call the Incarnation, the enfleshing of God in human form. Whether through the stories of Mary and Joseph or John's poetry, the Gospel is the same. The God of all creation enters the world as a human creature, born in the same way as you and I were born, utterly dependent upon others, completely vulnerable. Whether you tell a story about that, sing a song, write poetry, create art, the mystery will never be fully explained or communicated. St. John introduces his gospel by using the same sweeping words as the opening book of the Hebrew scriptures, in the beginning. In Genesis, it is God in the beginning who speaks the world into existence. In John, it is the Word who has been with God from the beginning, who is God from the beginning, through whom everything has been created. Without him, not one thing came into being. It is beautiful poetry, uh, and it sets the life of Jesus in the larger context of God's life. We are gathering in this online act of worship to pray together tonight, not to escape away to some fairy tale land for a few moments of fantasy, but rather to catch a glimpse of light shining in darkness. Maybe being at home makes it even more real as we consider this truth, the truth of the incarnation for our lives from the very places where we live and seek meaning day in and day out. After all, you don't need to shine a light if everything is already bright and cheery. We sometimes speak as though Christmas is this happy time for everyone. Maybe not so much this year, as we are, many of us, unable to be with loved ones in the ways we would wish, unable to be together in church. Christmas is a real world time and the crises of the world long for the light which Jesus brings. The real world which Jesus entered was a harsh place. He was born in poverty, in a place where animals were housed. And soon thereafter, he was gathered up by his father and mother and carted off to Egypt because of the tyranny of Herod. I see in my mind's eye streams of refugees in our world today, seeking nothing more than a safe place to live and raise their children. Jesus was one of them, a refugee before he was two years old. The global health pandemic has disrupted lives of millions of people, darkening the hopes and dreams of children and families the world over. Even with our wonderful vaccines, it will take years to recover from the hardships endured by so many. There is so much work to be done. Jesus comes into this world 
to be light in the midst of darkness. The God of the universe who loves the world so much has communicated that love in so many ways, through the creation itself, through the law, through the prophets, and now tonight we celebrate that God finds yet another way by choosing Mary to give birth to Jesus. Jesus will ultimately experience the very worst that humanity can dish out in his violent death on the cross. What a strange way God has to shine light in the midst of darkness. Jesus enters this world. He shares this life and invites us to see the world through his eyes and through his life-giving and life-saving work. He invites us to partner with him in extending the love and mercy of God to every creature under heaven. There is another line in St. John's poetry which I leave with you tonight. To all who received him, he gave power to become children of God. Jesus comes among us that we might know our real destiny as daughters and sons of the living God. That is light in the midst of darkness, and it is most certainly good news. Merry Christmas.
Christ. Let us offer our prayers to the source of all love and life by proclaiming, Lord, in your mercy, and by responding, hear our prayer. Lord, you have chosen men and women to serve you in the ministry of your church and given them a perfect example in the person of your son. Pour your blessings on your servants tonight, especially on Pat and Caroline, our Bishop Shane, and our, on Linda, our Prime. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tonight we pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and members of the Royal Family, our national, provincial, and municipal leaders, and for the leaders of other nations. Lord, we ask you to cleanse our body politic from any corruption, greed, and failure to treat other human beings with the loving kindness and respect that they deserve. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ourselves can barely scratch the surface of our national life, but with your help, Lord, we can all do something to shape our own local communities. We ask you to continue to inspire us as we discern our place in this community and to shape our neighborhood so that all may prosper and feel safe, secure, and welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those tonight who will not enjoy Christmas this season and for whom life is a struggle for survival as a result of poverty, famine, war, or the greed of others. We remember those who have become victims of society, the poor, the homeless, those with addictions, and those who are alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we prepare for another difficult period of isolation in our communities as a result of COVID-19, we pray for the men and women on the front lines of our healthcare services and the vulnerable in their care, that you will be their help and their defense. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray tonight for those who are ill. And we remember those friends, relatives, and associates who have died from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, you sent your Son to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Pour out your Spirit on the whole of creation. Bring the nations of the world into your fellowship. Let us pray for ourselves and for the blessings we enjoy this Christmas time, and open our hearts to God's presence that we may be transformed by this holy night. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the God of infinite goodness and light scatter the darkness from your path and refresh you with love and light. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, everyone. Please join me in singing one of the most beloved of all Christmas carols, Silent Night, three verses.